Now that I have a basic GitHub workflow, I want to build a simple node project and try to build this node project using the GitHub workflow. So I'm going to go in and I have my automation.yaml file that checks the version node npm. I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm going to go to File Explorer and Visual Studio Code and create a new file. This new file is going to be called index.js, and this is where I'm going to write the code. Now, since this is a node project, I need to create a new package.json file. So the easiest way to do that is using npm init. I'm going to use force because I don't really want to walk through all the settings manually. If I go back to GitHub, it creates a pack, or excuse me, go back to Visual Studio Code. It creates a package.json file. Now, I, I don't need most of this. So I'm going to get rid of pretty much all of this. Don't need it. So really, I have a name, example web app, a version 1.0.0, and then a main. When you run, I want you to run index.js. Now, what type of code do I want to add to index.js? Well, I want to do something really simple, maybe print out the date. So I know a really cool package for npm called moment. So I'm going to go npm install, save, moment. So added the package moment. If I go to package.json file, you see it's added to my dependencies. And so I can start using this package in my index.js file. So let's see. Var moment equals require moment. Var date equals moment formatted using the LL formatter. And it will just console.log date. So super simple, get the date, format it using LL formatter and log it to the console. So if I did everything correctly, I should just be able to go in here and just say um, node index.js and print out the date, November 12th, 2020. Super simple. Now, I want to commit this to GitHub. I want to make sure that we don't add all these node modules. And I know some people commit the package like that JSON file, but just as a demo, I'm not going to commit that file. So I'm going to create a git ignore file. And in this git ignore, I'm going to say ignore the node modules folder. I'm also going to ignore the package lock.json file. So I'll save that. You see it's grayed out in Visual Studio Code. So it's really only going to commit our git ignore file, our index.js file, and our package.json file. So that's perfect. So I'll close that. Um, add initial code. It's going to be the, the message from my commit, and I'll push that to GitHub. Now, all it's going to do is check the node NPM version. So it's not really important to me to see what's going on here in GitHub Actions because I already know the versions. So nothing's changed there. But I can actually start writing my action and trying to do things. So the first thing I want to do is I want to install that moment dependency. So I'm going to run NPM install to install the dependency. So install npm dependencies commit that push it from my local machine to github i'll wait for that commit to push there we go go to github actions there we go install npm dependencies is queued up we'll go to the build with node job which hasn't started just yet now theoretically this should work but you're going to actually notice when the job runs we're going to run into an issue. So it's initializing our container right now. It's going to check the version of node npm uh, once that container is pulled down. But when it tries to run npm install, we're going to run into error. Now, the problem is, is that when we try to run npm install, it's not going to be able to find a package.json file. And you're going to say, well, hold on. You put this package.json file into your Git repo. that you, And you synchronize that to your remote on GitHub. So why can't it find it? Well, the problem you're going to run into is that even though it's in your Git repo, that doesn't mean the code in your Git repo is in your agent. You actually need to pull that down. And you do that by using one of the built-in GitHub actions. So I'm going to go to github.com slash actions, which is their org with all of their actions. And from here, I'm going to go to a specific action called checkout. Now, this action takes your code and checks it out so that your workflow can access it. So it's pretty easy to use. Just uses actions checkout. So I'll copy that. I'll paste it in here. Save it. And then I'm going to run npm install only after I've checked out the code. 
So at checkout step, going to push this from my local repo to my remote on GitHub. And then if I did everything correctly, I should just be able to come in here, go to actions, see add checkout step was, well, uh, excuse the redundancy, but added. My job is in progress. Again, it's pulling down that container image. It's usually pretty fast. And then once it pulls down a container image, it's going to check the node version, NPM version. It's going to run actions checkout and just refresh it so you can see that a little bit better. And then once it's checked out the code and the code is available in the context of the local agent, only then would it run npm install. So there we go. It's pulling the code, put it into the agent. It's running npm install. It's fussing when it ran npm install that, hey, you don't have a description repository license built. That means it found my package JSON file. It added one package, which is the moment package, and zero vulnerability. So we're doing pretty good. So the last thing I want to do is I just want to add another step. Run node index.js. Now, once I add that step, I'm going to commit that and push it from my local repo to my remote on GitHub. And what this will do is just run the code. So if everything ran successfully, we'll be able to see that current date print it out using a special date format. And just to remind you, node index.js, I run it on a local machine. It printed the date of this recording, so I should be able to go in to my GitHub Actions, see that add final step is running, my build with node job is running. It's initializing the container. Once the container is done being initialized, it's going to check the version of node, npm, check out the code, run npm install, then run the actual node application. Now, this is okay, but if I wanted more friendly naming, I can actually do that. And let's just wait for this to run. There we go. Ran node index.js is print out the date. So the workflows ran successfully. I can do that by adding in a name property. So I can say uh, check node.js version. Let's see a name property for this step. Check npm version. I can add a name property for this uses step, checkout code. Maybe a name property for this run step, install npm dependencies. And a name property for this final step, execute node application. Now, I haven't changed anything functionally about this workflow. I just changed the naming so that the individual steps are named a little bit clearer. So um, updated naming going to commit this, push it from my local repo to my remote, again, on GitHub. Go back to GitHub, go back to Actions, updated naming. There's my build with no job. Wait for that job to get started running. There we go, job is running. And you notice... Same job, functionally, nothing has changed, but the actual names of each step is something much clearer, much easier for me to follow if I'm looking at this workflow for the first time. So again, we're able to update our YAML file to be not only organized, but clean, easy to read from both the YAML side and the GitHub workflow side.